Hey, this is Luke Symes with Salt Strong. In this video, we're going to be testing whether we need to use saliva to cinch down our knots or not. I've, I've seen, I, I know historically, uh, the, the idea is that you have to use saliva um, when, when condensing your knot, you know, when doing that final cinch so that you don't burn the mono. But that was a long time ago where that was essential. Now with the lines just being much smoother, um, supposedly that, that isn't, uh, isn't needed. And in some cases, I saw one study that actually showed that it can actually do more harm than good. So I wanted to do a test. So we have uh, some mono. So we use this Andy mono as the, the mono. Then we have some fluoro here with Berkeley Vanish. And then we have some braid. And so we're gonna tie them all. We're gonna tie three, three rounds, you know, three dry, three wet. And then we're gonna see how they actually perform on the actual breaking strength with this uh, with this tool. All right, so test number one is we're gonna start with the fluorocarbon and we're gonna use the non-slip loop knot with two twists. And we're gonna do that consistent with all of them and then we're also gonna do it with the uni knot. So first step, non-slip loop knot, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so for this non-slip loop, this is gonna be one that I'm not using any saliva. So I'm just gonna cinch it down by hand just to get normal tightness and that's it. And what I'm going to do, just to make sure that this is legit, right, like nobody's breaking their knots while they're dry, so I'm going to cut it, cut it off, and I'm going to soak them. Each, all of them I'm going to soak in this little thing of water, just so that it is, because uh, again, we're never, we're always going to at least have the lines in the water a little bit. So we're going to soak it in there. I'll just soak, soak these as I'm tying the others, and I'm going to tie one with saliva, one, or so that, that one was uh, without saliva. This next one is going to be with saliva. And then the saliva one's going to be dunked in the, uh, in the little tank as well. Again, we're just going to try to make this as realistic as possible. So the, the, real, the, the real thing that we're trying to isolate is are we, are we constricting the knot? So now I'm going to put saliva on it. So are we actually damaging the knot when we're doing that cinch without saliva? That is really the, we want to have that to be the ultimate variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, just to keep it organized, I'm going to have the no salivas going out this way and the saliva is the line going out that way. So now we can keep track of exactly what's what. All right, so that was the final wet one. So now I have the three dries coming out this way. I have the three wet ones coming out this way. And now it's time to break them. We're going to see if there's an actual difference. Turn our trusty knot tester on. And what I'm going to do is do a pull test. All right, so I now have it set up or have it, uh, the line wrapped around this dowel. And then we're going to lift it up and let's, uh, let's get it to zero. And we are going to see what the breaking strength is of this. This is 20 pound Berkeley Vanish fluorocarbon. All right, I just realized that now that I'm using a hook, I better put some safety glasses on. So I'm putting my, tr my trusty, trusty uh, fishing glasses on. And now we'll be able to watch it without fear of getting my eyes busted. And so now we have 11, 12, Wow, so that was 13 pounds, the knot totally busted. So that was 13.05. So that was a dry at 13.05. That is really not that impressive. Uh, but we know that the, these loop knots don't break as high as their actual breaking strength. All right, so we just recovered the, the hook and that knot is totally gone. That knot basically vanished. So the knot, the knot actually broke and just disintegrated. The, uh, the little bit of line is who knows where. So, all right, so now for number two, we are gonna go for one of the wet ones, one of the ones that we use our saliva with. All right, so test number two, let's go ahead and reset it. Now we will start the lift. And so we're at five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Wow, that was significantly stronger. So that could have just been an anomaly. So that was a little over 15 pounds. That is pretty cool. And you can see the line just busted. It busted right at the start of the knot. That's where we expected it. But 15.11, we'll go ahead and log it. All right, test number three, we're back down to a dry one. And so we are going to lift it up. Let's see how this one does. 15.11 is now the strength to beat. So there are 12, 13, 14, 15.6, wow, so that was the, uh, the dry one is now a new record. And that thing flung right over here, did not disintegrated just like normal. And, uh, and so we now have a new winner, so that is interesting. So that's just the, the amount of variability in tie knots is, 
is surprising. That was a you know two pound difference from the, the prior dry one. All right, so next test, we're back to the saliva one. We're gonna go ahead and lift this up. So now it's 15.66 is the strength to beat. So there's 12, wow, 13.2. So that was the wet one, so it's barely better than the first one. All right, so the final test for Fluoro's dry knot. So a dry cinched knot. Now we're 11, 12, 13, 14. Wow, so 14.8, and that hook came right, <laughs> right in my beard. So 14.8, and uh, that's, that's basically right in the middle of the other two. So we're now, we're now kind of, it looks like we see our maxes and mins coming. All right, so final test with the flora. This is the saliva one. So we'll call it a, the saliva cinch. And we will see how it does. So we're at 9, 10, 11. So wow, 11.8. So that was actually our new weakest one. That's interesting. So 11.8. So we'll do the tally and let you know what the actual totals were. All right, so the results are in and they're surprising. So with the Berkeley Vanish, again, with three tests, so an average of three tests, and I try to keep everything as consistent as possible, the dry cinch actually did better. And, and a, by a pretty good amount. So the average on the dry cinch was 14.5 pounds, and the average on the saliva cinch was 13.37 pounds. That's a 1.13 pound difference. So that's an 8%. So basically the dry cinch did 8% better than the saliva cinch. Totally was not expecting that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with, uh, with mono and see if that's the uh, same case or not. All right, so I just tied the, the knots. We'll get in the same case. We have all the dry ones coming out this way. We have the saliva cinches down this way, and now we're gonna go load it in the tester, and let's see if those same results happen. I will be shocked if that's the case. All right, so first test, this is the dry one. So this is the dry with Andy. Again, 20 pound Andy, this is a monofilament versus before we, oh, forgot my glasses, before we had the fluorocarbon. After that one hook got stuck in my beard, it's definitely smart to wear some glasses while doing this. However, we are using circle hooks to keep this as safe as possible. So now we're getting at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, wow, 17.8. Noticeably stronger than the fluorocarbon, which is interesting. So that 20 pound mono did way better. So 17.08 for the dry one. All right, so we got this, uh, we got the, the hook, and you can see what happened. So the, the knot just totally gave way. So it busted right there in the intersection. That's where all the magic's happening. And you can see here's the other end, just a clean break. So if I, if I saw this on the water, again, and most people say their knots don't fail, and they come back and they see the tag in looking straight like that, they assume that the line just broke. The knot broke, right? The, the break will almost always happen in the knot itself, not in the main line. Knots constrict the line, which will weaken the line. And so unless you have an anomaly in the line, it's gonna be at the knot where the break happens. All right, so now we have the first of the saliva cinches with the traditional mono. This is the Andy monofilament. So we're at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wow, 16.48, so that was weaker than the, the dry one. So 16.48. All right, so we're going to go ahead. This is another dry one. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do this. And so 17.08 is the one to beat. So we're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, well, six, 1704. So that was basically exactly what the first one was. The first one was 1708. So now we're at 1704. That's cool that it's that consistent. All right, so this was going to be a saliva cinch on the traditional monofilament. So this is 20 pound Andy mono. So we're at 13, 14, 15. So it's 15.97. And that is even lower than the earlier one. Wow, 1597. All right, so now, final test with this mono. This is a dry cinch. This will be the final. This Right now, the dry cinch is winning handily uh, against the saliva cinches. 
So we'll do the final round to see if that keeps up again. So 16.96. That's a little bit less than the others, but that's still super close. All right, so now we have the final test of this Andy Mono. And so far, the, the saliva, this is the a saliva one. So far, the best of the saliva cinches has actually been worse than the worst of the non-saliva, of the dry cinches, which is totally shocking me. So we'll see how this one does. So it's 15, 16, 17. Oh, now we got a now that was a that was a record. So 18, 4, 5. So as I talk some smack, uh, one, one came in there and actually one that beat the other. So this is 18.45, but we're talking about the averages, right? There's always gonna be some anomalies. So 18.45, we're gonna average them out and then we'll see how it is. All right, so the results are in for the Andy traditional monofilament line. And the results are shocking once again. So the saliva, the saliva cinch, which I, I was assuming was gonna be the winner, it was a matter by how much, the opposite was true again. So the dry cinch won once again, but it was barely. This was, you can almost consider this a wash. Um, so the average on the dry cinch was 17.03 pounds, whereas the saliva cinch was 16.97 pounds. So the difference here is, is, is under 1%. So we can say that that's kind of a wash. We'll call it a draw. But again, it's just surprising that the saliva cinches didn't, didn't really make a factor. It did, definitely did not make an improvement. If anything, it was a slight disadvantage. So uh, we're going to go ahead and switch to the braid. And so for braid, since we don't really use uh, loop knots for braid, we're going to use a uni knot and just see how that does with the braid. All right, so now for the braid, this is going to be a dry one. So this is the uni knot. This is the braid uni knot. So it's uh, through the eye twice and then seven turns. And this is a 10 pound braid. So, wow, so 16.67. So that's the first one of the dry. All right, so now we have the braid. This is a saliva cinch. Again, same 10 pound line. And that same exact uni knot. Oh, started to lose my balance over there. Get this thing back into action. So there's. 15, 17, wow, <laughs> wow, 21 pounds. I could hardly break the darn thing. So 21 pounds, that proved to be a super strong knot. That was, uh, that was abnormally strong. That must have cinched down absolutely perfectly. All right, so now we have the dry cinch. Get again with braid. The last one was very impressive. So now we're 17, 18. So 19.3, so that was up there as well. That's getting close to that 20 pound range. All right, so round two with the saliva cinch. Let's go ahead and reset it, get that thing down to zero. So saliva cinch, here we go. Round two, last one was very impressive. Oh, so that was actually much weaker. That is crazy. So that's 16.79, that's not even close to the first one. All right, so final round of the dry cinch for braid. See how it does. So we're 12, 14, 15.54. Wow, that's the worst so far. 15.54, still much better than the actual breaking strength. All right, so now final test of the saliva cinch with braid. Let's see what we have. So we're now at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, wow, so 19.6. That's solid up there in the 19s. Again, that's on 10 pound lines. So 19.6, so we'll do the final tally. All right, so finished up the tally on the Power Pro. So in this case, the, the saliva cinch won. The saliva cinch did better than the dry cinch. So the saliva cinch was at 19.18 pound average, which is very solid. And the, the dry cinch was 17.17 pounds. So that was almost a 12% difference, which is a big deal. Um, however, the, the interesting thing is that on all the tests, so these are just a, you know, a sample size of three, so you can't really say anything definitive. Um, what, I, what I do believe just from doing this test as well as testing knots out um, consistently for a while is that the the dry seems the dry is what I'm going to do for now on after this test 
And the reason why is because it, it did the best for those non-slip lube knots, which is what I use for my lures. But, but what was interesting, although you know, the, the braid won on the dry, which totally shocked me, I thought that braid, that if anything, it would only make a difference for mono because mono would be, um, you know, would be burning itself is what I used to think. I just don't think that's the case anymore. The lines are made so, so good now, these high quality lines. The outside of, uh, is just so smooth that it's not like the old days where it literally would burn itself because there was a lot of friction. It was a rougher surface. Now I just don't think that's, that's needed. And there was a study, I wish I could find it, I, I read it a couple years ago, that saliva does more harm than good in many cases. And I think we, we kind of uncovered that here because in all, the only thing that was consistent across all three of these uh, different scenarios where we had the fluorocarbon, we had the mono, we had the braid, in every case, the, the range of breaking strengths was more narrow on the dry compared to the wet. So the first one, the range was 2.6 pounds for the dry, whereas the saliva cinch was 3.3. Um, on the mono, the, the range was only 0.12 pounds, which is extremely consistent. Whereas the, the dry, or sorry, the saliva cinch was 2.48 pounds, which is, which is pretty far off. And then the range of the saliva on the braid was 4.35 pounds, whereas the range, you know, the, the best to worst, was more narrow on the dry for braid as well. So those, those ranges, that, that really just proves the point that, that using saliva can actually, yes, it can make it better in some cases, but, but it has just as much uh, opportunity to make it worse. And, and what happens is that when, when, when looking at these knots constricting, it's very important for many knots like the uni knot, the non-slip loop knot, to, uh, to tighten down in a consistent manner where, the, where they all kind of tighten down um, you know, one at a time, whereas if you use saliva, sometimes that just forces them to, to just all slide together and, and not, not tighten up as consistently and, and, and uniformly as it would if it was dry. All right, so overall, I mean, this study, you know, it, was, it was a sample size of three, so we can't say, you know, with definitive results that one is better than the other. However, uh, for the only thing that's 100% certain is that it does take a little bit more time to use saliva. And the thing that was consistent across all three is that the saliva cinches had a wider variant, uh, a wider range of breaking strengths, whereas the, uh, the dry ones, the, the breaking strengths were more, more uniform. They were more consistent. So for that reason, I'm gonna continue doing the dry cinches. I'm not gonna worry about, about using saliva. And I'll be curious to get your thoughts. If you've seen one outperform the other, if you've done any tests like this, I'd love to hear your results. And if you've seen that study, I read a study, it was a couple years ago, and if you can find that, leave a link up to that below. I'd love to read it again to see if, uh, if this test was in line with that. All I can remember from that one is that it actually proved that, that saliva can sometimes do more harm than good. And as far as the variant, right, I think that this test was consistent with that. Whereas, again, the breaking strengths were, were more out of control, I should say, with saliva, whereas the, the, the dry cinches... Those, those breaking strengths were, were much more consistent. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for your time and watching this video. I know this was kind of a boring one, but it's fascinating to see what I used to think was a have to do, right? Every knot you tie, you have to put slive on it. It's very interesting to see that the, the difference is not noticeable as far as being saliva good. If anything, the, uh, at least for mono and fluorocarbon, the saliva cinches did worse. It underperformed the no saliva. And for those of you who are new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the online fishing club that'll help you catch more fish while saving money on all the tackle you need to catch slams every trip. For more information, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. There's something about the water that'll give you peace all by yourself or with your family. Live Salt Strong and wear the line today.